Coming up on Tech News Today, Anonymous is having a civil war. But how do they know who's on which side? Also, Wikipedia sued by Bacon and Drudge beats Twitter. That's more coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. is Tech News Today for Monday, May 9th, 2011. Tech News Today is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies streamed to your PC, Mac, or TV instantly. Plus, get DVDs by mail and about a business day. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Darren Kitchen. And I'm Jason Howell. And this is the show where we kick around the tech news of the day, try to make some sense of it all for you. It is, we're going to start to have to number the days now on the Sony PlayStation outage. They did not come back no. over the weekend. Wow. No. They As are still down. They are still down. Stay you know, down! I, 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 pr- I predicted this because when we do our hacker headlines on Hack 5, we shoot six days in advance, and one of the stories was about the Sony outage, and I just You had to make of, a judgment call. I had call. to make a judgment call, and I'm like, you know, as we've reported about the ongoing outage, and I was just like, that that should cover it, right? You didn't, sh- you didn't shoot it two ways just in case? Eh, You're no, like, no, no. It's going to still be down. No, because it's, it's publishing tonight anyway. So. All Things D reports that Sony may, in fact, offer a reward for information that leads to the hackers in cooperation with the FBI. Uh, oh, there was no weekend attack uh, against uh, Sony. Uh, either Sony bolstered its security or the attack info was just bunk. Uh, but Mizuho Investor Securities Analyst Nobuo Kurahashi said, I bet Tom Merritt mispronounces one of those words. Mm. <laughs> and he also was right. said estimated loss of $1.25 billion in business from Sony because of this outage, both in paying for all of the identity theft protection. They say they're going to extend that to Europe as well as the United States. Giving away free game titles. Yep. This on top of their shares going down 6%. Yeah, it's not good, and according to the Financial Times, two members of Anonymous admit that supporters of the loose-knit group waged the attacks on Sony systems and stole the data. So now they're starting to look like Anonymous may have been responsible, but that's the problem with, with a Anonymous. group like, that's called Anonymous, well, first of all. Let's say we're all, everyone in this room is part of the group Anonymous. Can we just be And Darren powered? and Tom dis- decide to steal some credit card numbers. And I say, I am part of Anonymous and I had nothing to do with this. But that doesn't mean that other two people involved in a group called Anonymous didn't also. That's the problem is that you don't have anybody who's like, Here's our spokesperson. Right, because it's anonymous. Right, that's Otherwise, the point. it wouldn't be anonymous anymore. So, I mean, I think... Well, 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 actually, I think there's actually a long-term hacker from anonymous who goes by the name of Kayala, who, I guess, isn't anonymous anymore because he has or a K- handle. Or Kayla. Well, Kayla, something K- like Kayla, that. Kayla, yeah. Quotes, um, the hacker that did this was supposedly, uh, was supporting an on-ops, uh, or, I'm sorry, uh, Operation Sony's uh, movements, and that... He, he goes on to qu- say, uh, if you say you're anonymous and do something as anonymous, then anonymous did it. Which right. is exactly what you're saying, Sarah. Because mm-hmm. there is no central authority that can say, well, this is where we are anonymous and this is where we are not anonymous. Yes. Remember, we're talking about the word anonymous as part of this whole thing, which means you can't identify anybody anyway. Also, in a message uh, to users posted on anonops.in, uh, part of the anonops network, admins accused an operator called Ryan... Uh, of stealing or, or of organizing a coup d'etat uh, and stealing the IP addresses and passwords of users on two anonymous sites, anonops.net and anonops.ru, which they now say are compromised and are warning other members. I get members is the wrong word, but members of anonymous uh, from using. Well, well, that sounds like a lot of infighting within a, an organization that is well. If loosely you're if you're that decentralized, I mean, no one's going to agree. It's like I mean, does everyone have to sign off? There, is there some sort of a database? I am part of anonymous. I mean, if there's nothing of the kind, then people are going to do what they're going to do. Wow, Garst, I think may have nailed it. He says anonymous is like a reef. They're all part of the reef, but the reef isn't one entity. Oh, yeah. they're coral. It's beautiful. Yeah. So one branch of the coral may be responsible for taking down the Stony PlayStation Network, which sure. is where the story began, and in fact is still down. And no end in sight. They say they're working to put it back up soon, 
uh, but that securing the Sony Online Entertainment Network over the weekend became more difficult than they anticipated, and so they've had to keep it down. Of course, Bloop. there's been a lot of, of, uh, of FUD about the fact that they would be down till May 31st. Bloomberg reported, t- took a quote that said they, they want to be back up in May and said, well, the end of May is May 31st, so they want to be back up by May 31st, and now everybody's reporting they won't be back up until May 31st. That, that's not true. Patrick Siebold says that, in fact... They want to be back up as soon as possible, and and if uh, and, and I have to say, if they if they took them till May thirty first, that'd be disastrous. I, I don't think they're going to take that long. Yeah, the direct quote is much more of a vague. We really need to have all service restored in May. So if you take that as well, May thirty first would be the last possible day that's within right, yeah. the window that they're promising, and that gets taken out of context. People say, so three weeks from now, what? This is yeah. what I, you know, and that's. Sorry, go ahead. And that's, no, not, just, that's just not the case necessarily. This is what happens when you try to be cleverly vague. You say, yeah. we're, we're going to be back up in May, which means, okay, if so I'm going to take that literally, as May 31st, that means at May 31st 59. would be the last day that you could be up. Mm-hmm. And then you, you, know, you, you wanna, should just say what Siebold said, which is, as soon as we can, we are going to be back up. You want to take that more literally? So 77 million gamers on the service, 24 hours in a day, 41 days down if it was May 31st, 75 trillion 768 <laughs> billion hours of gaming lost and think of think of the titles that are coming out yeah actually that's kind of a serious issue uh that that are not you know people are not going to want to buy them on the playstation network if they know they can't use the playstation network quick developers port it to xbox yeah jk well uh, well yeah i mean anybody who's who's made a game who depends on the playstation network uh for people's for people to play the game, right? And what happens to their relationship with Sony? At it makes this you point? wonder if there's contracts in place that you know that there's some sort of SLA involved in um, in the PlayStation Network for a the other service level service agreement. Level agreement. That, I yeah. mean, it's a free service, so you're technically not missing anything you've paid for, right? Unless you paid for Sony PlayStation Plus. Well, in which case, okay, yeah. you'll get you'll get a month free. You're not watching your Hulu and Plus. a choice of one of five games that you can have. Yes, and identity theft for a year. For a year. I mean, identity theft I protection. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> well, Two different things. Yeah, identity theft possibly get, for longer than you might a year. Get both. Yeah. Your identity yeah. theft actually starts uh, in a year and one day. That's mm. already started. Yeah. <laughs> possibly. <laughs> Still don't know. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move on to Microsoft announcing a VIP preview announcement for May 24th. Uh, this will announce new parts of the Mango operating system update, which is supposed to come in fall. Uh, they're going to do a 10 a.m. unveiling in New York. Uh, we know Mango is going to have multitasking uh, that is battery dependent. It's that kind of faux multitasking that just kind of pauses uh, and and delivers tasks to a user agent in the background. The user agent can do more if it's uh, if it's plugged in versus being on battery and how how well the battery is charged. Mm-hmm. Also going to get IE9, the ability to do background music. And then we have some other leaks, according to information given to the Windows Phone Developer Podcast. Uh, these were, were posted up on WMPowerUser.com. Uh, Microsoft plans to add something called Bing Vision, mm-hmm. which would be a QR code scanner, uh, OS, optical character recognition sort of thingy. Uh, there are also something called Bing Audio, which works like Shazam. You hold it up, it can recognize recorded music, not live music. And uh, voice guidance during navigation, turn-by-turn direction, native support, and native podcast support. All of these As things, well as voice to SMS. All of these things Android has. You know, the Google Listen, the Google Goggles, the turn-by-turn is built iOS in. iOS and, and Android both have. And, oh, I guess they don't have the Shazam built in. iOS doesn't have anything uh, that recognizes, that, that IDs music internally, but there are... But you can get Shazam, Shazam, yeah. Shazam or yeah. SoundCloud or Soundtrack. Oh, and look, we were that. we were uh, we were a screen capture in the leak. What do you know? So that's a, there that, we are. So that's an example of what a video podcast would look like, would look in, like. in Mango on uh, Windows Phone. I, I mean, I think all these features sound great. I I feel for any app maker who's who's been working on a Windows Phone version of some sort of music ID service and is like, ah, great. Now it's just going to be uh, rolled in uh, with with Windows Phone. I'm really looking for the voice recognition SMS messaging service because that is just going to take auto incorrect to a whole new level. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that blog, but it's hilarious. Dang you, auto incorrect. YouTube is expanding its video rental service as suspected, uh, adding 3,000 new movies to rent to U.S. users accompanied by reviews, behind the scenes, movie extras, so you get a little DVD type feature. YouTube also announced investment in 20,000 partners. Partnering up with Sony, NBC Universal, and Warner Brothers, 
Uh, you get movies now like Caddyshack, Goodfellas, Scarface, The King's Speech, Green Hornet, and Despicable Me. So these That's are, the movie. No, I'm not talking about are, myself. You know, one of those movies won Best Picture at the Oscars. I mean, the big movies. Yeah, big the, stuff. Good stuff. They're available to rent at industry standard pricing, which we, what, five bucks, three bucks? Something like that. Somewhere in there. Uh, can be watched with your YouTube account on any computer. We already tested uh, movie rentals on YouTube don't work on your computer if it's a tablet. At least on my or iPad. Safari, yeah. yeah. Wait, well, a free movie worked, but not uh, a rental Yeah, that was interesting. Movie. I could watch Super Size Me, which is available for free, no problem, on my iPad, because mm -hmm. YouTube videos play. But when I went to rent, it said, yeah, not available on your mobile device. Because the movie studios, they don't see computers as anything but desktops and laptops. Mm, well, maybe they're just not done with converting video over to HTML5 enough, because that makes no sense that you could rent a movie In and HTML5. pay... For, for for the movie Wonder how much on your iPad, which is where I would watch the majority of movies anyway, instead of this laptop here. See, now I understand the logic of what you just said, which yes, is it was a, logical a argument. doesn't make sense, <laughs> B does make sense, so B must be the more likely option. But that's not usually true when we're talking about movie, movie studios. studios. So in that case, I take B doesn't make sense as being the more likely option, which is that they're just right. randomly stopping you from watching on a tablet because they want to charge you some other way. Good point. They just don't bring the logic always. What I thought was kind of interesting about this is... Um, bring logic. Come on. So Solar Hired in here. Commander, Commander uh, mm -hmm. he, he, the head of YouTube, says, listen, people are spending on average about 15 minutes a day on YouTube. And they spend five hours a day watching TV. So YouTube is obviously like, hey, we're very popular for certain things. Short, little viral videos, yep. uh, easy to upload, share with your friends, that kind of stuff. But people aren't hanging out on YouTube all day. Your classic dramatic groundhog. That's right. That's, you know, a five second and then I'm off to something else. 15 minutes, that, I mean, you imagine 15 minutes on a YouTube video has to be something that's pretty compelling because we're just used to getting in and out and you go through, you know, when someone tweets a link and you look at it and then you're off uh, back to whatever you were doing before. Getting somebody to spend hours at YouTube is really, um, that's a big undertaking because it has to redefine what everyone associates with YouTube. Quality, you know, do you want to watch the King's Speech on YouTube? Well, yeah, sure. I just never thought of that. Yeah. How much? Ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's take a break and thank our sponsor, which happens to allow you to watch movies on any kind of device. Netflix.com. Get you thousands of movies on your iPad, on your Android device, on your television. Uh, you can you can watch it through widgets, or you can watch it streamed to your TV via Netflix ready devices like Xbox 360, PS3, or Nintendo Wii. Watch them stream directly to your PC or Mac. And you get DVDs by mail in about a business day. Watch as many movies as you want, anytime you want. No late fees, no due dates, none of that. Well, you, you have to wait. Uh, you, you've now rented it and started watching it. You have 24 hours to finish. You can watch the movie over and over and over again if you want. None of that chicanery. And there's good movies on there. They're great movies. Um, Star Trek, uh, well, the newest Star Trek just the got added. The reboot Star Trek. That's right. Yeah. That was so popular. I loved that movie. Amber and I were just talking about it earlier. Um, that's been added to the, the instant streaming collection, which is growing day by day. There's a lot of good stuff. Titanic 2, which you probably would only want to watch on streaming. But there it is. It is the sequel. Wow. I didn't realize that there was yeah. one. There, but now you see that, that's the other thing about Netflix streaming is you find all movies that you didn't even know existed. And you, if you hover over the title, it'll tell you all sorts of information about yep. this movie it that makes you've never heard of. It makes recommendations based on what you watch, too. Yeah. So Not it, to mention the social helpful. networking aspect of it, yep. where if you add your friends, you can see what they're watching and, you know, You can judge them on their queue. Yeah. Well, you can judge what kind him of a person free. is Darren? Titanic 2 is at the top of his queue. Hmm. <laughs> he must be a man of good taste. <laughs> <laughs> Start building up. He must know something I don't. <laughs> Start building up your profile right now for free for 30 days. Go to netflix.com slash twit. And when you do, you'll let Netflix know you thank them for your support of Tech News Today. HP had some announcements, some product announcements today. Uh, looking interesting. HP Mini 210, 300 bucks. Uh, nice little netbooks. I guess they haven't heard netbooks are out. But they're cheaper now, 300 bucks. That's the, that's a cheaper HP Mini than we've seen in the past. The NV14 also added a USB 3.0 part. Starts at $1,000. Will be available with a range of Sandy Bridge processors and AMD's latest Radeon graphics starting June 15th. But then the most interesting one 
is the ProBook 5330M. It's an entry-level laptop, 800 bucks. A business laptop with a Core i3 processor, 250 gig hard drive, all of that sort of stuff. But it comes with something called Data Pass uh, as an as an add-on. You pay a little extra and you get a Data Pass modem that lets you purchase 3G service from your laptop. Laptop. Now the service is HP branded, but it's actually operated by somebody called Peregrine Network. On this laptop, their 3G service will operate on Sprint. Mm -hmm. uh, but it can operate on other networks, so other devices may come out with the service built in that would work on Verizon or be a world laptop that could work on data networks anyway. DataPass gives you $5 for a modest 75 megabytes, so that's not a lot. And that's uh, only over a duration of, what, five hours? Uh, well, no, that's enough for about five hours, according to HP. So you, you, you could probably spend 75 megabytes in about five hours. But you get well if you're being right. There's no information on whether that is over the course of a, if you have 30 days to use that right. 75 megabytes. Which if you were very sparse and only using like Pine or Elm over an SSH connection, you know. To I guess you could stretch you could it out over you could, 30 you days. You could stretch it out and hey, five but bucks for email. But that's probably pretty unusual, don't you think? I'm just thinking about my hacker crowd. Okay. You know? You don't want to leave out the hackers. Hey, five <laughs> bucks take for, you down. For, for email for a month. That's well, not and they have, they have 10 bucks for 150 megabytes, 20 bucks for 450 megabytes, and $30 for a, th for a gig. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know what? Now that I'm reading this on, on This Is My Next, I, one of the posts I read said that 75 megabytes was estimated to be enough to last you five hours. The way This Is My Next wrote it up in their chart, it's that... $5 gets you five hours of service oh. at 75 megabytes because $30 gets you a gig for 30 days. And I'm telling you, you could go so through more than a gig in 30 days. This yeah. makes more sense to me yeah. than saying, with 75 megabytes, you've got five hours of fun because it's like, well, that just totally yeah. depends on the make person. Any, yeah, right, exactly. So, I, no, I think you're right. 75 megabytes and you got five hours to use it in. So you're paying a dollar an hour for five hours of access. 30 bucks for a gig. And don't download seems, any movies. Seems pretty steep to me. 30, Even over 30 days. Yeah, well, 30, but, bucks, 30 bucks for a gig of, of the 30 days is the biggest deal here because, uh, you know, this is the first we've seen of pricing like this on a mobile uh, I'm sorry, a prepaid uh, operator, mm -hmm. even though they're like an MVMO. Uh, I believe it's Virgin Mobile, who's also an MVMO, offers a $50 plan for unlimited up to two and a half gigs for the month. And then it like throttles after that. Uh, whereas their, their lower plan, $10 for only 10 days. So actually, I guess it's really the same, $10 for 10 days. It's times pretty, three, yeah, you're bucks. not yeah. really getting much of a deal for going up mm -hmm. in price. Yeah. I think the iPad still has the best price of $25 for, what is it, two gigs for a month? You know, the benefit to this is that you have a non-contract data plan built into your laptop. Totally. Yeah. That's what a so, lot of people want is that non-contract data there've plan. Because there have been data plans built into laptops, but there are always ones you had to buy on contract. And mm -hmm. so a lot of times you had to buy the laptop from AT&T or Sprint or somebody. This one says, you know what, you just pay when you need it. So for the convenience, maybe it's few, worth it for yeah. some people. You have a little know. bit of a premium in pricing. The I, I know just from experience talking to T-Mobile, it's uh, tw it's thirty dollars for a thirty day pre uh, prepaid data plan from them, uh, but it's only three hundred megabytes, mm. and you have to buy a hundred dollar USB dongle with it. Yeah, mm. this is this is kind of old fashioned in its outlook, saying you know you just need to check some email and send some Word documents. This is the data you're going to use. And that, that people are doing video conferencing. I mean, we're not just talking about streaming movies, although that's part of it. Uh, but people are using high data intense business applications now as well. And I don't think this accounts for that. Uh, we have an interesting story in two ways here. One, Adam Lashinsky uh, writing up on Fortune a really inside look in how things work at Apple. Uh, you can read the first few paragraphs at fortune.com, but then... You have to buy the magazine to read the la rest of it. They're not publishing it anywhere online other than these first few paragraphs. Although you can go to your iPad, should you own one, and buy the issue there for four ninety nine. But, oh, I see. So it, what they're saying is this is a really, really great article, um, an inside look into Apple that few people have ever seen. Right. So this is our great opportunity to strike, get people to download the iPad app or to pay, I don't know, become a print subscriber or to reward people who are print subscribers who say, wait a second, why am I paying to kill trees when everyone can just read this crap on the website for free? Now, I feel slighted. What's in here is really juicy stuff about Steve Jobs 
asking, uh, telling a, a room that they should hate each other because of the horribleness of the mobile knee launch. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's actually a quote. That, yeah. You should all hate each other because yeah. Google Me is such a failure. Uh, a, a, a secret group within Apple called the Top 100 that people are added to and removed from, they're told not to put it on their calendars. They're taken to a secret location and given, uh, and, and given a chance to hear presentations. The 10 people that actually have to present at the Top 100 are scared for their lives because this could make or break their career. And other things like... Every agenda item at Apple having a DRI, a directly responsible individual, that person alone is responsible for this project. So you know exactly who to, to blame or, I mean, contact should you have a question about it. It's like, it's almost like a curse. You know, if you're really talented and you work at Apple, you're like, you better be good in front of a crowd, you know, yeah. and work well under pressure. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it, it's oh. uh, people's feet are held to the fire. But there's some there's some other interesting things here about how uh, Steve Jobs does not hold any manager accountable for P and L. He says that the CFO alone is accountable for P and L. You should just be making quality products. Mm -hmm. uh, he he actually checks in on every project in a Monday meeting once a week. Uh, he doesn't believe in general managers. There's no dotted lines in the organization. Everybody is on a team, and that team does what it does, and nothing else. Uh, for instance. The person who runs retail for Apple does not manage inventory. That's managed by Tim Cook. The person who runs the iTunes store does not create the graphics in his department for the iTunes store. That's created by the graphics department. So there actually may be some truth to some of our buddies who work at Apple, at App, you know, in the corporation and go, you know, I have no idea what they're doing over at iTunes. And you go, oh, come on, tell us. They yeah. probably don't. They probably don't. <laughs> They're not allowed to Now, know. here's the thing. And you may be intrigued right now and say, you know, I'd like to read this story. And maybe you'll go to an iPad. Absolutely. And you'll, uh, and, and you'll, you'll go to the store. Uh, you, you'll download Fortune. Mm -hmm. And you'll say, okay, I want, I want to download that Apple story. Where is it? Well, it's not obvious. When you get there, you see two issues up at the top. One has a Twitter logo on it. And the other is about the Fortune 500. So is there an information area where you can If you get read more cover story, it says on the May 23rd issue, which uh -huh. you think probably it's like, wait, May 23rd, that's Hasn't weeks from now. Hasn't happened yet. The Fortune 500, our annual list of America's largest corporations featuring an inside look at Apple. Okay. Okay. It's there. Okay. But I but mean, not, you think they'd make it big and splashy. Especially since... Bear in the lead. The, yeah, the, yeah, I mean, this kinda. is... This is they figure people if this is are going to be test. going to the app store just now. And well, and, and then there's also, and this is done in blogging all the time, and people using other people as a source for their own story. What's happening is people are just regurgitating the fortune story, bullet pointing it, yeah. and then putting up all the information somewhere else. So, like we just did. Kind of. And I was reading all of those points from a Wired article. Which, which is actually about as long as the fortune article. <laughs> is, so it's kind of like, and they're... they're I guess there's an ethical issue with that because Fortune's like, hey, we're trying to make money off of this and we didn't want to give everybody the whole story, but this is common practice as well. The other in interesting journalism. thing is they're going to make an Amazon Kindle single out of this story. You won't, you won't be able to get it until tomorrow, but for 99 cents, you can just download just that article. Is there going to be like a B-side story? <laughs> yeah, the B-side you know, story. If you want to know what's going on uh, behind <laughs> nice. the scenes at Microsoft, at we also have that. <laughs> Not a hit, but we have it. Right. Or at the pineapple. You're going to have to flip your Kindle up, upside company. down for that one, though. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got a couple more of uh, these stat stories coming out at us. Uh, looks like Pew Research Center's Project for Excellence in Journalism uh, reviewed the top 25 news websites, looking at their Nielsen data to figure out where they get their traffic from. Well, it, everybody pretty much knew the top driver would be Google. But after that, it gets interesting. Facebook <coughs> was second or third for almost all 25 news websites. And three sites ever account for more than 10% of the traffic to any major news website. Those are Google, The Drudge Report, and Yahoo. You know who's missing from this list? Twitter. Twitter uh, plays almost no role in driving visits to news sites. There was one news site that it had a couple percentage points. There were some people actually on a, a similar uh, Slashdot article that, ar uh, that argued that they probably weren't taking into account things like Bitly or Is Good links. Uh, that's yes, because the I, I don't know how Nielsen tracks these referrals. So if they were saying the referral was Bitly instead of Twitter, that that it's could definitely of, reduce the the Twitter numbers down to zero. Kind of a hard thing to track too, because the same Bitly links end up finding their way into Facebook, and when you go through Facebook, they they make it so that the referrer is coming from them. 
75% of news uh, readers come once or twice in a month. 7% visit 10 times or more a month. So that's the challenge. That's why everybody wants to put a paywall up because they figure, well, 75% only visit once or twice anyway. Yeah. If we only charge the people who visit more than once or twice, most of the people won't even notice and we make some money off the people that want to come all the time. The, the power users, if you yeah. will. Comscore reports uh, app Android had a good first quarter in usage. Comscore reporting on the number of smartphones in use, 72.5 million of them in the U.S., 34.7% were Android. That's up from 28.7. Uh, BlackBerry's usage stat went down from 31.6 to 27.1%. iPhone stayed pretty much even at third, 25.5%. That's only up a half percentage point. And Windows Phone dropped from 8.4% in use to 7.5% in use. That combines Windows Phone 7 and Windows Mobile, by the way. Uh, Comscore bases this, these numbers on surveys of 30,000 U.S. mobile subscribers. At the same time, IHI Supply came out with a shipment numbers for Q1. iPhone shipments rose 15%. HTC rose 6.2%. RIM rose in shipments 4.2%, even though the number in use went down in the U.S. Mm. Uh, smartphone shipments declined overall 1.5%. Want to know, it's like, well, all these shipments rose. How could it decline overall? Nokia declined 14.5%. There you go. Nokia. Sorry, buddies. So Android, again, leading a, uh, a stats I, I mean, report. I mean, what do you got to say? It's the obvious report. Yeah. Happy Monday. Congratulations. Android's you woke up. The sun's the shining. Android's number one. <laughs> Let's move on to the news views. Talk Talk just became the first major UK internet service provider to implement network level anti malware blockers on its service. Uh, the uh, ISP previously got in trouble for not telling its users it was monitoring its behavior in order to prepare for this system. Uh, it sounds pretty nice, though. Here's what you do you allow the Chinese firm Huawei to follow and log every URL you visit. Oh, oh hooray. Yeah. That's fine. And mm -hmm. then it blocks all the bad things that you don't want to see. Thanks, Huawei. It's like your own personal Chinese firewall. <laughs> uh, the system is opt in and allows for some user configuration over what gets blocked. TiVo has worked out a deal with Comcast to bring its Xfinity video on demand service to retail TiVo Premier DVRs. So the rollout will be a market by market upgrade with the San Francisco Bay Area up first. Woohoo! This also puts the nail in the coffin of the old Comcast TiVo project and ushers in a new era in which Comcast will offer and install TiVo Premieres just like its own boxes. Parody, baby. Apple's white iPhone did cause a little small revolution in the San Latun neighborhood of Beijing. Multiple sources report that a scalper tried to jump the line and was escorted away by Apple employees, who then became embroiled in a fist fight with one of the scalper's relatives. Now, the employees closed the store to the crowds, and well, closed the store and then crowds rushed the doors and then broke the glass. And wait, scalpers, fist fights, insane mass behavior caused by consumerism? China's stealing everything that the U.S. is best at. Man, we have got to get better at something. Yeah, and they've got more people, too. I think we can still beat them at fistfights. Vupen Security posted that they are unhappy to announce that they have pwned Google Chrome and its vaunted sandbox. The exploit bypasses all security features, including ASLR depth sandbox. It is silent, resulting in no browser crash. It relies on undisclosed vulnerabilities, and it works on all Windows systems. The details will not be publicly disclosed, but hey, Chrome doesn't crash, am I right? Yeah. 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 Hey. They say things happen in threes. First they time, say. then Hearst, and now Condé Nast have fallen and fallen hard to Apple's iPad subscription plan. Ow. Starting this week with The New Yorker, digital versions will be available for free to current print edition subscribers, of course. Nothing new here. For, free, uh, for new subscribers, it's $5.99 per month or $59.99 per year, which gets you 47 issues. Seven other magazines from the same publisher, Condé Nast's big publisher, are coming by the end of May, including <laughs> Wired, yay, and Vanity Fair, priced at $1.99 yay. each or $19.99 annually. So happy about this Wired Vanity news. Fair, me too. Listen, Vanity Fair is fine. Yeah, they've I got, think they should combine those they've two. They've got, you know, their celebrities on the covers and everything, but Wired is actually something I read every month. Wired that, Fair. You guys hear about Pure Hacking, an Australian security firm. The, they published a blog 
post describing a vulnerability and a proof of concept exploit affecting only new version 5 of Skype for Mac. Pure Hacking believes that the exploit could own your Mac. Skype is saying that it would only crash Skype. Either way, Skype is saying that they like totally knew about it and uh, the exploit, and they, they wrote a patch way back in April 14th, but they like totally didn't see the need to publish it. But whatever, it'll be in the next update, so shut up. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Skype said. <laughs> Thanks to an Amazon update, you can now stream your music via the Amazon Cloud Player website on iOS devices. iOS users will effectively see the same web interface a desktop user would. There isn't a customized mobile site or anything. If you're into multitasking, you can even run songs from the Cloud Player in the background while you do other things, like read your Fortune magazine. Like that. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so there's this billionaire U.S. hedge fund manager. His name is Louis Bacon. That's not his real name. Uh, well, it, it's it's the name that he's given us. He's making bacon. Yeah, that's right. He's bringing it home, too. That's but a lot of people don't like him, um, specifically uh, people who use Wikipedia because his Wikipedia page and a couple of other sites had content that Bacon found defamatory, which made him want to sue. In fact, he actually got a UK court order that says those sites need to disclose the names of the online authors who defamed him. According to some legal experts, since this is a UK court order, US-based Wikimedia could just ignore the whole thing. But either way, be careful what you write online because billionaire hedge fund managers are notoriously rich and may want to sue you for millions. They want to take me or a court. Or even hundreds. That would that would hurt me a lot. Yeah. Don't take my last 500. Freaking tens. That's all I got. Uh, finally, a mobile phone that could be charged by the power of speech, meaning you would have to make calls, I guess. Uh, this, is, this is a new development reported in The Telegraph. Researchers promise a way to recharge phones using nothing but the power of the human voice. Actually, it would be able to work on background noise. Could you just yell well. at your phone? I think the more charge, you yell at your you phone, jerk. the higher it would charge. I think that sounds great. I think great. that's the way it should work anyway. Think of the stress relief involved. It's like screaming fudge. It could actually use right. um, music to charge the phone too. So if you're just listening to music. Just ambient music? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. That's really cool. Uh, it gives people a new reason to shout in their phones though, says the or telegraph. Just, or just so. become there, a beatboxer, your, you know? Yeah. There's your perpetual motion machine. Yeah, like exactly. That. Your ringtone starts mm -hmm. charging your phone. So you just let it keep ringing. Yeah. You know? well, well, I, I was going to pick up on the second ring, but I noticed my battery was low, so I, I left it re-ringing for a while. So yeah? it's like when you see someone walking down the street and you're like, are they talking to themselves? Yeah, actually they are. Yeah, they're trying, trying to charge their phone. They're not on it. Hold on, I gotta, <laughs> my battery's almost dead, so I'm going to have to yell. Uh, the technology uses tiny strands of zinc oxide sandwiches between two electrodes. Uh, a sound absorbing pad on top vibrates when sound waves hit it, causing the tiny zinc oxide wires to compress and release. This movement generates an electrical current that can be used to charge the battery. So you could just leave it, you know, near noisy traffic and it would charge up. Yeah. Or you could narrate your text messages as you type them. Oh, that's not annoying. Hey, I'm walking down the street. I'm going to turn left. Look at the sun. Isn't I'm charging pretty? my phone. My phone battery is almost dead. I'm going to keep talking until it gets up to 10%. 99 batteries on the wall. Calendar time. All right. Google I.O. starts tomorrow, and we will have coverage. In fact, at 9 a.m. Pacific, our very own Tom Merritt, and this week in Google's Jeff Jarvis, will be providing the live play-by-play -play here at Twit. We'll be here. Yeah. But you'll be watching the stream and, and providing Right. Leo insights. and Eileen and Gina will all be at Google Oh, okay. I, I didn't realize And we I will be, will be well. uh, stuck here covering it. So Wonderful. they will be there oh. not covering it, getting free things. And Jeff and I will be not there oh, I see. covering so it, you're not, not getting free They will things. not be live They'll be viewing. coming back and talking about it later. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, it'll be very exciting. HTC's Facebook phones, <laughs> uh, they're named the Cha-Cha and the Salsa, are, not avail are now available for pre-order at Amazon.uk with a June 26 delivery on subsidized prices range from about 400 to 550 U.S. dollars. Um, I would like a phone called a cha-cha, but I don't really need a Facebook button. I like my Facebook apps. But anyway, might apply to you. Reminder that a Judiciary Subcommittee on Privacy, Technology, and the Law hearing, that's the one that Apple and Google have been politely asked to participate in, begins tomorrow. It's Tuesday, May 10th. And the Nexus S4G is on sale today. $200 at Sprint and $150 at Best Buy. Oh. Guess Cho I know where I'm buying yeah, it. Yeah, choose choose your locale, whatever. We won't judge. You want to spend that extra 50? You're a high roller like Lewis Bacon. 
All right, let's move on to voicemail. 260 TNT Show is the phone number. And uh, Sean here has an interesting way of consuming our podcast and an idea I want to bounce off you all. So yeah. take it away, Sean. Sean from New Jersey here. I'm a tech news junkie, and I need my fix in concentrated format. I listen to podcasts at double speed on my iPhone, and I find I pay much more attention. It's like driving fast down the highway. It's much more efficient, and you guys sound so much smarter when you speak quickly. But the problem is I can't play you at high speed when I stream. So please consider making a high-speed version of your podcast, double speed, whatever, and perhaps you'll start a trend. Thanks, guys. Love your show. So he wants he wants to be able to click on a link from the website and have it available at double speed because he can only do double speed when he's downloaded it, not when he's streaming. Maybe we just start talking faster. We could do that. But then if he's listening to it downloaded and it's really fast, then we're going to sound really, really fast. So I think that's it. I think that's what we'll do. Thanks uh, for that idea, Sean. We're going to talk really fast as we go into the email. TNT at twit.tv. Karn Cannon writes in and says, Hey, crew, thanks to the original email who mentioned David Braben's new invention and they were reading his email. This device looks really cool and I would like to get my hands on one that they get to go in production. I had once thought, though, wouldn't this be an excellent use of the new Thunderbolt tech? Seems like adding TV connection or replacing the USB with TV would ensure them even more versatility and usefulness. What are your thoughts? I'm speaking at normal speed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you didn't catch that... Uh, I, I, I didn't actually. I didn't really understand what you said. Canon was ac asking if that uh, that twenty five dollar computer we were talking about with the USB port at one end and HDMI at the other. Yeah. What if it had Thunderbolt? Would Ooh. it be better? Ooh, Ooh. Yes, it certainly would. That opens. Um, There's just not enough Thunderbolt mm. devices yet. But if I, ultimately, yes, because then you could daisy chain the crap out of it. I mean, I, you can just put a USB hub on the end of it, I guess. Yeah, but they all share the same throughput. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. What are you going to do with 700 megahertz ARM processor? You know, Thunderbolted to Daisy. A Beowulf cluster of 700 megahertz ARMs? What are you going to do? Crack SHA1 hashes with that? No. Although you could, and that would be really neat just because you did. Huh. Yes, I agree. <laughs> you've, you've, you've convinced me. You're like that guy trying to charge his phone. Yeah. I'm just going to start having a conversation <laughs> with himself. Yeah. <laughs> Tom's charging his phone really fast by speaking <laughs> at a high, yeah. high velocity. That's too. All right, that's it for this edition of Tech News Today. Thanks, everybody, for watching. You can uh, find Darren on Hack 5 Woo! the rest of the week. JK, the number 5org Check it. Also, you can find us on the web at live.twit.tv every day, 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern, or you can catch our uh, podcast by clicking on it. No high-speed edition yet at uh, twit.tv slash TNT. Email us tnt at twit.tv and give us a call. 260-TNT-SHOW is the phone number. Free call in Butler, Indiana. We'll see you tomorrow. It's called my TNT dribble. Oh, is that what that's oh. called? Yep. Kicking it down to the show. Show you my TNT dribble. <laughs> <laughs>